Hello everybody, Dave Neal here, stand-up comic host of Bachelor Nation News. And in this video, we have Dean Unglert saying that he will buy an engagement ring as long as his soon-to-be fiance buys him a truck. Hey, sounds like a fair deal, right? Logistically, I mean, lo logically it makes sense, right? Of course, ain't nothing logical about relationships in the archaic tradition of getting a engagement ring for your partner. Although Becca Kufrin has showed that she's willing to propose, although it is pretty much in the minority. Something like 5% of engagements start with a female proposal. But in this case, she's saying, put a ring on it. And of course, uh, the audience of Bachelor Nation is a little bit triggered by his response saying, yeah, I'll put a ring on it. You just put me in a truck. You can have a ring on your finger. I just want to be sitting in a Ford F-150. We'll get into all of this. Follow me on Instagram at DNeals and also on Patreon for private membership content, patreon.com slash Dave Neal. Now, people have been asking me about my mustache, a lot of questions about my mustache. No, I am not portraying the live action version of WB Mason. That's not happening. And no, I am also not uh, in the biopic for Tesla, all right? That's Nikolai Tesla, not uh, Elon Musk Tesla. Anyway, we're going to get into it. I'm going to play these clips. And of course, as always, it's all nuanced Dave. We'll get into his thoughts. And of course, why diamond rings are just a ripoff in the first place. They're priced exactly at the level at which men will pay to conform to society's standards. And if that ain't capitalism, baby, I don't know what is. They ain't worth anything. Did they just say there's like one trillion pounds of diamonds on Mercury? Be cheaper to go to Mercury than get a three carat ring with good clarity. Speaking of clarity, I've got a lot of clarity today now that I'm drinking my new uh, Lion's Mane coffee. Woo boy, your boy is getting out there and getting that nootropic love happening. All right, let's get into it. What's going on with the haircut right now? What? Well, I mean, obviously I've had hair, but like, it looks good. You just haven't styled it this morning. Maybe that's no, why. I definitely have not styled it. I have had hair. Don't right. you love the sort of backhanded jabs you can take at a friend? You didn't do your hair. You haven't brushed your teeth, have you? <laughs> that type no. of uh, dude, no, my barber's awesome. His name's okay. Good barber. Let's get into it. I've got the... a question for you guys now that I have you here, Ashley. Mm -hmm. So you guys got engaged, obviously. Again, just another example of bad audio on a podcast. Come on, guys. Look at what do you, you know, you run a podcast empire. This is your job. Dean's wondering why he's not making any money. Let's get him a $50 microphone and maybe some sound treatment on those bare walls. On Bachelor in Paradise, which is not how most people see their proposal going. Has there ever been any discussion of like reproposing in a more like intimate or personal Jeez, way? Jeez, way to put him on the spot here. Look, look, Ashley's like, oh yeah. Have you discussed reproposing? Okay. No. <laughs> would you even want that? No, I would. I, I sometimes think that like second proposals are kind of weird. I yeah. think that second proposals are fine for like what Jojo and Jordan did. I think that. I Let me ask you guys this question. Would if, um, speaking to my 92% of my audience, which are women here would. And again, I know how many comments saying, I don't even care about a ring. My thing's worth a hundred bucks. I get that. But there's also people who live in this Instagram world where if you don't have a big ring, some people see that as like a, you know, it's, it's BS. It's BS. It's a, it's like when I grew up, I had, I had cheap pay less shoes. I had, my mom was, we were relatively poor and I had the fake shoes. And I remember a buddy being like, dude, you're not getting new shoes this year. And I was like, no, Liam, I'm not getting new shoes this year because I'm seven years old and I know money's tight and you shouldn't have to know that as a seven. Point being is that, you know, the diamond ring is the new shoes version of engagement. Oh, show me the ring. You know, you want to feel good about it. This and that is it's BS. It's BS, but it exists in society. All right, finish. Actually, off. like made a lot of sense for them. He had a new ring. Why they, did he have a new it, ring? She didn't like hers. She may have been over hers. Uh, well, mm -hmm. it's also because it's it's the value of the ring comes from the hard work it put into it. If I was gifted a ring and just gave it to my lady, while that would be a beautiful ring, she would know I didn't pay for that. And that that does mean something, right? Different on Bachelor because you're like, hey, here are the three you choose. Yeah, from. right, right, right. So that was more per like a more personal ring. And then also I think that it was just like them really deciding this was like, this is not a bachelor move. This is like us actually getting engaged after us feeling so confident in our relationship because I'm the two of them like definitely had a very difficult first year, they say. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. They were like on the verge of breaking up once. I've got a Whoa. question for you guys now that I have you. She was talking about JoJo and Jordan at the verge of breaking up. Well, I mean, most couples are their first year, right? The whole first year of a relationship is like, are we going to do this or not? 
Are we are we gonna do this? You just want to know the other person's committed, which we'll get into with this clip. So Kaylin's been sending me engagement rings that she wants. Oh boy! Says, oh boy! You're getting tagged in the old inspo board. Oh, nothing has been. Look at it. <laughs> look at Jared here. Yeah, that's right. I know. You know, subtle hints. Oh, I've tagged Dean in this very expensive rock. Me a four and a quarter carat emerald cut diamond ring. Uh, four and a quarter carat. Here's a 4.5 carat for $78,000. This is a K color. So this isn't even like a clear color. If we went with a like higher, uh, what's the best? Okay, you, you guys, I'm not trying to. The point being is like, yeah, you're looking at sixty to $100,000. Ideally, he's, he's at four, he said four and a quarter carat. Here's four and a quarter carat, J cut, and it's uh, almost a hundred thousand, one million dollars. So kaylin has been sending me engaged rings that she wants and she sent me a four and a quarter carat emerald cut diamond ring um four and a quarter yes not cheap and how big is uh, yours i don't even know is it yours like a quarter how do you not know no. it's a carrot i think it's more than a carrot it's, it's like a pretty good rock but i it's a good do ring I, I don't i'm not a very much uh i'm not very knowledgeable on this stuff sorry i enjoyed the deep how do i how do i take kaylin up here um and just gently place her on a significantly Jeez. lower carrot, you know? Well, you know what they say. You're supposed to spend three months salary on that's, a ring. You that's great. Crap. I would spend zero dollars on it then because I haven't made money in like six months. You are such a dean. <laughs> you are <laughs> such a dean. So kaylin has been sending- So there's nothing more unattractive, in my opinion, than somebody who comes off as cheap, but I understand. It's BS. So I don't have the audio offhand. We're just going to read the transcript here. Dean says he'll buy Kaylin a ring if she buys him a truck. He confessed that he and Kaylin had begun shopping for engagement rings, but it wasn't going well. Joking that he was trying to convince the former pageant queen to look for a smaller diamond than the one she wanted, which is 4.5 carats. He revealed that he threw a hissy fit when they first started looking. I was like, I don't even want to be in here right now. I don't really care what I wear on my finger. Blah, blah, blah. We had a bit of a scuffle. <laughs> he said a scuffle. Uh, it's such a touchy subject. Kaylin makes significantly more money than I do, and here I am having to spend all this money on something I don't even even want like I want her to get what she wants but she's the one who wants to get married all right that's th this is going to be a little rough here however he has come up with a compromise I made a deal with her I was like I'll buy you a ring if you buy me a truck and that's kind of like an old that that's I mean not not to say that that's not a valid thought but it's a very hack like comedy premise like I want for my engagement I want a boat like but I get it I was looking at my fiance here I don't have many photos of her ring because she's kind of modest about it but she's got a two plus carat ring we found it on a website. I'll actually show you the website. Why don't we promote her? Um, Jewels by Grace is the name of the website. Um, so Jewel, Jewels, because I feel like you guys like this. We found the diamond ring here and it's vintage jewelry and ours. Um, so you can go, oh, she got 200,000 followers. We've met this nice lady, Grace. She comes, she finds vintage jewelry and has it sort of recast in different settings and this and that. So our ring that we found was two plus carat ring and it had like a champagne color to it. So it didn't, it, it had some imperfections, but it looked really beautiful. And um, we were able, and it came from the late 1800s, the ring. It was um, found at an estate sale, an estate sale in New York City. So I've been told. You could probably find the ring on here somewhere. Um, not really sure how far back it goes. Is this it? It was something, it was something like this 10 weeks ago. Now this, no, that's seven carat. Holy cow. That's huge. Either way, if you like going through rings and stuff, they, she, I mean, so, so the point being is I can empathize with Dean because look, Dean's not the breadwinner. Kaylin, let's just, just for so fun, been sending me let's go to Kaylin's page here and just see her following size. Cause we can kind of gauge how much money she makes. Usually an Instagrammer uh, from an influencer from bachelor makes a dollar per follower. So she has 1.3 million followers. So she could potentially be making a million dollars a year or has had that type of earnings in the past. Not to mention, we go to their YouTube channel. Those are monetized as well. She's probably making something like $3 per thousand uh, views that she gets on there. Um, so I don't think they've got... All right. 73,000 subscribers. So more than me, more than uh, this small YouTuber Dave here. 
But um, if I switch, uh, let me uh, switch accounts. Hello, It'll, I'll be, welcome back to another Oh, call. the audio's so bad. I have been waiting to share. No, you can't, you can't be doing videos in your kitchen with bad audio. Hello, welcome back to another. Now, two, you need to get those acoustics done. Either way, the point is, so here's my channel. I'm at 341,000 views, which is one third my normal amount. Normally, I'm at a million views a month. She's at 42,000, five views per thousand. So she's only making a couple hundred bucks a month. Uh, or, you know, or man, a couple thousand, you know, depending on what her sponsorship deals on her YouTube channel. So not much money there. But yeah, when we look at Dean, she's got 1.3 million. Dean's at, oh, he's at 1.2 million. So he should be making money when he does. Maybe he hasn't had a sponsorship in a while. But, you know, to say that she makes a lot more money makes me think that he's not trying hard enough. Either way, point is, he's saying, like, let's compromise and let's buy each other something, which would be the progressive thing to do. You commit to each other. You give each other a gift to, to unify as a symbol, right? Well, I'll say this. Even though diamonds have not much um, intrins intrinsic value, like they're not an investment, but they are an asset. They can be resold, just usually not as much as you paid for them. But with that said, a diamond's going to last longer than a truck, especially if it's American made. Because that's right, folks. We don't know how to build a pickup. Okay. All right. Big Toyota fan here. So anyway, people not happy with this. Is he the one or is he just tall? Always ask yourself, ladies, someone said. Uh, Dean reminds me of so many men in my youth. The couldn't be bothered mentality. The I don't really want to put a label on this and ruin it kind of guy. Look, some people are going to be triggered by what Dean's saying because we have to, we have to understand. I, I can't know what it's like to go through this world as a woman and a woman can't necessarily know what it's like to go through as a man. And there's a giant spectrum of, of where we stand in the middle of that. So I can't quite understand how much it would suck to have someone date you for four years casually during your, your, you know, we have to, we have to be honest when we have these conversations. A lot of it's built on the biological clock, which exists. It exists for men and women, less so for men. Men do have a biological clock with our sperm, but it's obviously different as you see a bunch of like rich old guys in their seventies knocking up their, you know, young, you know, whatever. So it's a little bit different. Whereas women, obviously look, my fiance is 35. I think if we got pregnant, it would be considered a geriatric pregnancy, which is wild, but there is a, there is a window. And if someone's messing with someone else and not taking their relationship seriously and doesn't want to commit, you're robbing the other person of their time. You should at least communicate that, you know? So I understand that it's complicated. Likewise, it's very complicated for a man to invest in and spend all this money when he doesn't necessarily have it. Now, Dean's probably got more money than I did when I proposed, so I'm sure he could figure it out. Um, the other issue that happens is that just because you don't like the institution of marriage or whatever, if your partner believes in that and it's a small wedding or some paperwork or something you can uh, agree to do, like for me, I probably wasn't going to be gung-ho on getting married because, you know, we just see our friends get married and it doesn't work. And there's always a cynicism that exists there. But I look at it and I go, this, if this is what my relationship needs to show that it is strong and to build that bond, and, it, and, if, um, and if this protects my fiance from feeling like she won't be left when she's no longer at her hot stage, I'm using these in quotes because these are conversations people have. And I think we need to be serious here. It might sound cringeworthy, but these are conversations people have where, where um, you might have people that will only date someone for their looks and then their looks go and then they're like, well, what the hell am I now to you? And, you know, and then you knew her model this and that. It's not necessarily great out there, but that's, that's the world we live in, right? Uh, well, not necessarily all the time, but people can still have those fears. I personally don't believe I've ever done anything to instill that fear in my own fiance's world, but we all have triggers and baggage from past relationships. So if she needs to know that I'm committed by buying her a ring, put it on her finger and say, I'm so excited to call you my wife, then I'm all on board. With that said, it's still a crock of shit, right? You don't need to spend three months salary on an engagement ring. Here's what you do instead. So one in five people who plan on getting married feel expected to spend between five and 10 grand on an engagement ring for their future spouse. That's a lot of money. They still, um, despite these societal pressures, a majority of respondents say they still only spend between 500 to 2,500. Following a three-month guideline, a person earning 61,000, the current median household income would have to spend around 15,000 before taxes on a ring. It's just ridiculous. Where do these pressures come from? 
The unrealistic and sometimes stress-inducing expectations about how much you should spend on an engagement ring have many places of origin. The three-month rule stems from a marketing campaign that De Beers Diamond Company ran in the 1930s that sold the idea that true love and commitment could only be shown if a man spent a month's salary on his wife's ring. In the 1980s, that expectation grew to two months' salary and later three months. How ridiculous is that? It's all messed up. So I can understand Dean not liking the system. I can understand that. I'm sure Kaylin doesn't like the system too. I'm sure she doesn't like the pink taxes and the societal pressures to put makeup on and to keep a certain weight and all the other things that exist. Even if they're not right, those weights bear down on us. How do we get over this? I really don't know because I'll tell you what, I'm part of the problem. I caved. I got the expensive ring. At least it was at the time. Probably still the most expensive thing I've ever bought. You know what I mean? I drive a car worth two grand and a ring worth a little bit more than that you know i feel like my ring needs airbags all right yeah we got insurance so just in case if things go sour i'm gonna take that thing off and throw it into a lake you know what i mean i'm just kidding if we ever do that all right folks let me know what you think we got more content coming your way i'm on instagram with new stand-up comedy clips and also patreon.com slash dave neal i'm going live right now bye everybody